you try to learn the facts and tell the story and the truth, that was not the mission at RT. And then MH17 happened and it was just, you know, there was no shadow of doubt in my mind that it was just not something that I could defend or be a part of anymore. It's hard to work for a channel like RT. It's a hard, especially with the situation in Ukraine, it's a hard job to have, it's a hard channel to work for. RT is mass information manipulation and it is incredibly effective. The propaganda bullhorn that is the state-sponsored Russia Today program. RT is under fire again. And that is why personally I cannot be part of network funded by the Russian government that whitewashes the actions of Putin. Will these sanctions that we saw today work? And does Russia deserve... So I think it's become a stigma to have anything to do with RT. The RT is a propaganda channel, fine, okay. But RT is a propaganda channel, it becomes the only argument. So when we write a request to have someone who has completely anti-Russian or anti-Putin views onto my show, we not only get denied, but sometimes people are really rude. <laughs> the way it is in, in reality differs from the way it's probably imagined to be on the outside, which is probably that, I don't know, President Putin wakes up, has his coffee, calls Margarita, uh, says, you guys do this, 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 this today. And that's how our news block is, is put together. Um, obviously, that's not the way it's done. Well, it said pro-Russian TV station. Now, what is that even supposed to mean? What do you mean a pro-Russian TV station? Is CNN a pro-American TV station? Is BBC a pro-British TV station? It's just weird. I mean, Russian TV station, that's fine. We have never made a secret out of being a Russian TV station, but a pro-Russian TV station. Ukraine's Crimea region officially becomes a part of Russia. Before we wrap up the show, I wanted to say something from my heart about the ongoing political crisis in Ukraine and Russia's military occupation of Crimea. Just because I work here for RT doesn't mean I don't have editorial independence. And I can't stress enough how strongly I am against any state intervention in a sovereign nation's affairs. What Russia did is wrong. After this newscast, I'm resigning. Very quiet in the newsroom, as I recall. And the news director, when I walked out of the studio, said, Liz, can I have a word with you? The pressure kind of comes in many forms. I, I'd say there's, there's, I think, I mean, at any company, there's that pressure where you want to please your bosses. You want to please upper management. Uh, and the guys that ran the place were Russian. The money is coming from the Kremlin in some form. And so they were the guys that you wanted to make happy. Well, one year later, people here in Newtown are struggling to cope with the tragedy. Definitely there's work that I'm proud of, stories that I've done that I think were definitely worthwhile. I think when it gets kind of shady is when it comes to foreign policy. We begin with the crisis in Ukraine. When it came to Ukraine, that's a, it wasn't even subtle anymore. If I was anchoring, the questions were, were fed to me. Whereas before I had some more, I, there were kind of main ideas that they wanted to get across and some questions that they wanted to ask, but we would, we would have a guest that would already tell the narrative that Russia would want you to hear, that the Kremlin would want you to hear. So I would kind of be instructed to egg them on, to kind of get them to riled up to, to tell that perspective. And if I tried to challenge it, um, it just didn't fly. What we're presenting is an interpretation of events that, in my opinion, is perhaps it might be a little bit more broad-minded uh, than what a lot of people uh, are watching and, and basing their understanding of Ukraine on, which is you know, what, we, what we now know is the mainstream media. The U.S. accused anti-government forces in eastern Ukraine of shooting down the plane. The United States and the EU are so arrogant. What is Washington hiding? The crime I would like scene, the last you, thing I, I want like to see is more violence of any kind, to verbal release or otherwise. All of its data okay? from satellites and compare they it to the are Russian doing case. Exactly that. See where they match, where they don't match. They, no, they are Peter. not. I don't know what. RT style guide rule one on a story like this is absolutely not Russia's fault, it's Ukraine's fault, or whatever country uh, that we're trying to fight back against. The problem comes if 
you have information that isn't in line with what RT is saying, that's never going to get on air, you know, just not in a million years. So there'll be no one at the moment at RT investigating the claims that are being made about Russia funding the separatists. There will be absolutely zero investigation into that. Um, and and so, you know, you can't call that journalism. It's It's just... It's a big, effective PR machine. I've personally never had any problems. I'm American. I think it's really sad that I have to work at RT to do stories that I want to do. But um, I've never had an issue where I couldn't touch or do something uh, that I wanted to do. Might it be a coincidence that my opinions and my line falls into what's called the Russian perspective? Perhaps, because my perspective is to give a different perspective than what you see um, on other channels. And so if they're just lucky to have me because of that, then that's fine. A new president has been sworn in in Kiev. Maybe he'll be held accountable for civilian deaths in the east now. But the situation in Ukraine, especially with recent developments, um, has made me more proud to work for RT, if that makes sense, because I think it's a really clear example of how certain things just doesn't get uh, into other media. And if so, being, uh, you know, a Russian, funded Russian state channel means I get to show people in the West pictures of civilians that are being killed in the East, then that's where I want to be. I'm known for, for working for RT, for uh, analyzing mainstream media and stuff like that, that I think it'd be really hard for me to get a job anywhere else. And I'm not necessarily sure that after RT I want to work in the media, to be honest. Um, I love what I do for now. I don't think I would ever get hired by any of the major networks, <laughs> which is fine because, um, like you said, RT gets a lot of uh, slack online by relatively well-known people, but then there's people who are not so well-known that write to us, um, that send us stories, that send us pictures, that say thank you, and that for now um, is more than enough for me to, to stay here and keep working.